showing me the live, not showing me the thumbnail I made. I reshot the thumbnail and it didn't show it to me. What? Well, I guess we're live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Everybody. <laughs> Something unexpected happened in my the usual routine of starting a live stream, so uh, uh, it caught me off guard there. Wasn't supposed to be at this stage yet. Anyway, uh, going to give it a minute while people join in. And uh, it's a gray day today, so there it's a possibility that more people will uh, arrive Hopefully, than yeah, normal. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of our usual sunny days when we do virtual studio parties. So uh, I'm Kim Lee Ko, and welcome to my virtual studio party, a um, an online creative gathering, making session, chit chat, um, and so on, uh, that's been going on since shortly after the first lockdown due to COVID-19 in the greater Toronto area in Canada. And um, uh, as usual, I have my co-host here. Cal Honey. Hi, Cal. <laughs> Hello, Kim. <laughs> How are you? I'm delighted to be here. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. So yeah. um, virtual studio party and, and we took a little break for a few weeks. Uh, needed a rest and there's a lot going on so um anyway we took a few weeks and we're back and it's always great to be back doing this uh one of our favorite things actually so um so welcome uh welcome uh to those of you who are regulars or semi-regulars and welcome also to any newcomers uh last week i was teaching a workshop on um, gel plate monoprinting, a really nice group for um, uh, for Quest Art in Midland, an art school and gallery. And Cal and I have both taught there a few times, and um, and I've always enjoyed it. But it, I have to say it, it's not convenient for us to travel to Midland, and we would overnight. And um, so doing the workshop for them on Zoom was was wonderfully convenient by comparison and the people were just lovely plus some of some of my people signed up for the the workshop which was awesome so um, I felt like it was seated with some with some people I could rely on for their enthusiasm and curiosity but I it turned out I didn't need it because the rest of the group was really good too so if uh, possibly less experienced so, um, so yes, uh, here we are in a, our third state of emergency in Ontario. And, um, so I feel like it was a timely, timely thing to have virtual studio party arrive today. And next week, of course, on Cal's YouTube channel, Cal Honey's YouTube channel, um, we will be joining you for virtual collage jam. So the, the parties and jams that come to you wherever you are with your high-speed internet. That's right. And yeah. it just uh, depends on who's in front of the camera and who's beside That's right. it, right? That's yeah. right. Virtual exactly. Collage Jam, he's in front of the camera and I'm helping out with the chat and uh, vice, vice versa, versa for this. Yeah. So, But it's always on Mondays at 2 p.m. <laughs> That's right. In between, during, 2 p.m. our time. Yeah. Eastern, so Eastern Toronto, Midway. Canada time. Yep, and you just exactly. calculate from there. <laughs> so lots of people saying hi. Mm. So uh, I, I hope you don't mind me please, catching you up. So, please. Uh, Rebecca says them. hi, Kim and Cal. Oh, and hi. Annie says hi, Kim and Cal. Nice hi, to see you Annie. back. Nice, Aunt, nice to hear you here, Annie. That's great. Sparkle Girl is Kay. Kay, right? yes. yeah. So Kay, hello, Kay. Lovely to see you, yep. Kay. And Nellie Lama has joined us. Yes, so, yeah, Nellie, yeah, hey. awesome. I'm yeah. glad you yeah, were able to great. figure that out. Vera Walton is with us. Hi, Vera. Welcome. Uh, one of our regulars, Jane Laster-Gordon. Oh, hi, Jane. Welcome back, Jane. Jane says, it's nice to be back. You look well-rested. Oh, thank you. 
It's the makeup. <laughs> uh, Linda McIntosh says, hello, my lovelies. Can't stay long. Have another meeting to go to. Would much rather play with you two. Oh, we well, wish you, you could for, too, but thanks yeah. for coming by to say hi and yeah, you catch can, what you can. You can always catch it on the, the rest of it on the replay afterwards, maybe when when you get a quiet moment in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Debbie Moses. Hello, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. You said you thought you'd be yeah, coming. So I'm great so to glad. See you all, she says. Lori Graham says, great to see you. Oh, hi, Lori. And uh, Debbie says, miss you guys. Ah, yeah. that's so nice. And Lori, can you remind me? I know, I know I've been interacting with you relatively recently, <laughs> but forgive me. Um, yeah, my memory combined my with the uh, millions of people I'm dealing with in different parts of my life, I just... I can't remember the context in which I know you, obviously art related, but uh, if you Productive wouldn't mind flourishing. sharing. Oh, right, right. Awesome to see <laughs> thanks you for here. Connecting yeah, thanks. Aww. Shan Shan Sharon McKinnon says, thanks for great workshop. Fantastic. So Sharon is from Quest, which I was just talking about. Thanks so much, Sharon. So glad you could be here. Uh, Val is back, Valerie Ashton. Hey, at Val, welcome hey, Val. back. Hey, Val. One Great our, to see you back. One of our stalwarts. Yeah. Um, and MLG says, it's Catherine from Kitchener. Do you know a Catherine from Kitchener? Catherine from Kitchener. I probably do, but... <laughs> but um, you might have to connect us a little bit more than that because we, we've now taught enough people that oh. we are, lose some of our threads. So, oh, yeah, uh, so yeah. So, Catherine, if... Nice. if uh, or, are you, or maybe, you or maybe you're us. just Catherine from Kitchener. We've never met you, Which so, you know... would be great, yeah. yeah. Regardless, welcome yeah. aboard. We're delighted yeah. to see you here. Yes, and if you are new here, if you don't mind sharing generally where you're from, that's uh, it's always nice to see. Catherine says Halliburton days. Okay. Uh, and one of our other stalwart regulars is back, Cherie. Hello, Hi, Cherie. Cherie. Welcome back. Missed you too. She says, missed you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's so nice. Uh, Lori says, great to see you flourishing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how productive I am. Uh, <laughs> it's always funny when um, uh, trying to, when doing stuff and talking, right? But at least I'm not teaching. This isn't, this isn't a, for those of you who are new to this, this isn't a class per se, although of course I answer some questions. Uh, you know, you see something happening, you want, you want to know what that is or what that, what I'm doing, that's fine. Ask, ask away in the chat. And, um, and I will show you uh, progress or, you know, the results of something for sure. So and because we now have this new webcam that I can t lift off of the laptop, um, I've never been able to do any overhead shooting uh, during the live streams, only during my Zoom classes. Um, but now I can do that. I won't do it excessively though, because it's it's another thing to manage. And, and uh, of course, then I'm doing shaky camera stuff, right? Which is always pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> Lori says she's making this a recurring time, and today she's doing a bit of sewing. Lovely. And Gerda has joined us. Hey, Gerda, Hi, welcome Gerda. back. Hi, Gerda. Welcome back. And she says she found it hard to get into the chat. It sent me to other dates or to other sites. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly I'm, can't. I'm glad you've managed yeah. it because that's, that's Thanks just for persevering. ludicrous. Yes, exactly. I have no idea why that would happen. And Marg is, he says here for a while, hey. just may just watch. And absolutely, that's completely cool. Just that's the thing. Come to either of our events to work on what you want to work on. Cal, for his, um, always provides a prompt for collage artists or other media. Um, but um, you can work on anything you like. Or you can just hang out and chill out. You can just work on a bag of Doritos if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> or on yeah. that, uh, that happy early If I tried to do that, that would be a problem. No. That would make we'll, me ill. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it to our... Uh, All kinds of surprising <laughs> things in sketchbooks when you uh <laughs> Are you cracking out a up? new sketchbook or a sketchbook you amazing. had open for a while? That's right. And yeah. I thought um, to, I'm going to get warmed up on some small stuff and, and uh, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to get warmed up, whatever you're going to do. Um, just like a pianist, right? And, um, but I thought I would work on some somewhat larger paper 
uh, it's not really large. It's 11 by 14, but that's sort of a manageable size in this context. It would be hard to work on genuinely large stuff for this event. Um, but that gives me a couple of sheets to, to play with. Sue, Sue Smith has joined us, and oh, she Sue, says she's going to try her first transferees image transfer to a piece of plywood. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I love transferees. Uh, transferees, for those of you who don't know, is an ink aid transfer medium that's compatible with their transfer uh, film. So it's inkjet printable film that's specifically designed for transferring images. And I I demonstrated that in a couple of uh, my previous virtual studio parties. So if you go to the playlist, if you didn't see those live and you're interested, um, uh, the second last virtual studio party before the break, I did transferring onto metal. And the last one I transferred onto ceramic tiles. So, so one thing I was just reading that, I, it occurred to me that like if I were instructing i would suggest that she try that on a do a smaller one on a scrap piece of plywood first to get a feel for how it behaves yeah would you recommend that or I, is that i don't know just me being over cautious <laughs> well it depends partly on the person too um i happen to know that sue is um a printmaker and a book artist oh, okay yes and so i, I know, know her, her level of precision when she's doing stuff like when she's coding something launch right in sue yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it helps to know the person in general yes i recommend testing on small things that don't matter as much just to get a feeling for the material and sue please feel free to do that obviously um uh, because I switch between media and processes so much as a multidisciplinary artist, like I could be sculpting with wire one day and then doing giant transfer prints and then, um, and then doing little tiny, very precise paintings, precise in not in rendering because they're not rendered, but in terms of the process and how the paint is uh, altered and applied. And so like, that's a, and then digital, and then I'll be working in my digital studio. So that's a crazy shifting set of circumstances. So it's absolutely essential that I warm up with um, tests um, in order to get my brain and body back into that medium and process. So Sue says, thanks, guys. I'm launching and testing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Rebecca says, oh, and Kirk asked me to say hi as he's working today. Hey. Hi, thanks, Kirk. Thanks so much. And pass, yeah. please pass along our hellos to That's Kirk. That's right. Has he got any uh, more subversive cross-stitch in the works? Do you know? <laughs> subversive cross-stitch. I love that. I don't know. This is a nice shape. When, it's fun to, it's what, fun to warm like up a, with shapes. You, uh, I that? made it. It's so this is a, a mask I've made for the purposes of gel plate printing. And the thing that happens is you get these beautiful buildups of, of paint and distressed finishes. I hope that's focusing for yep, you. Yep. Um, and, and there sort of comes a time where you have to decide if um, it's now just so beautiful, you need to collage it into something. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well only only if you uh give me a replacement <laughs> i need the oh, shape right well i'll take it afterwards then. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i just i'm browsing for some shapes just um because that helps me feel it so what is this binder you're browsing through this, is, this is my, my gel print binder or something my stencils and there's a nice um shape Great shape. Um, it's my stencils and masks binder. So, you know, like here's a. It's great. You can see the stencil is the black is the reveal of the space, but you see the mask is also in with it, um, jutting into the black. Looks like a warped N or Z. It's great. I love it. Yeah, 
I like doing sinuous things like that, but I also like doing awkward things like these um, these arches, you know. Yeah, those have have a. They remind me of that Revolt of the Arches uh, piece by Paul Clay. Yeah, Paul Clay's arches. They de great, I studied I that. that oh, likewise. Growing up, I remember studying that even. Um, so, because I was lucky enough to have art, a lot of art books in the house. Cherie says, I'm taking my camera out on my daily walks and accumulating a collection of images. Then I can use, use them with Procreate to make digital collages. Posting yes. some on our virtual collage site. Great. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Cherie. That's great. And Rebecca, I think in answer to the uh, subversive cross-stitching says, I'm not sure. He hasn't been cross-stitching for a few weeks. He was recently learning some general embroidery. Oh, cool. Ooh. When, when I was a young pup, I did a fair bit of embroidery. I used one to, of these days you're gonna have to share with share with the class, so to speak. Yeah, uh, yeah. what uh, I some used, of those projects? Yeah, yeah. they're really amazing. I uh, I embroidered a, a favorite album cover on a on a back of a jean jacket and some. Anyway. No, I'm no. sighing oh, at okay. me, please. Oh. <laughs> That, that has nothing. No, no, I, I, I just thought it was uh, getting just, you off track. No, right. no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Off track. Seriously. <laughs> like, how is that off track from this? Well, I think I'll just have I'm, to. I'm embroidering use these. the truth of it. Oh, except I want those arches. I'm indecisive today. Man, driving myself crazy. Sorry that you're uh, watching me drive myself crazy like that. But um, anyway. I've got a couple of things here. We'll see how it goes, right? Might as well grab that too. What the heck? All right. Because I am just getting warmed up. I don't need to turn this into a big production. Why don't I do a square one as my warm up? you do me a favor my dear i can in the alex drawers the uh ones near the window maybe roughly halfway up are um mixed media pads that are smaller than the this big one i've got okay are you looking for the six by nine uh, no that's a watercolor pad isn't it that's six by nine I'm looking for mixed media pads. I'm just gonna give you a better view of the table here so you can see what I'm working on. There, that, you can't see my eyes though. That's not very good. There, that's a little better. Okay, that's a little better. So there, okay. Space right in front of me is good. Thank you very much. Ran out of time getting ready. All right. I cleaned my plates assiduously after the workshop last week. <laughs> oh, this is the plate actually that's damaged. Can you uh, top there? That one. Yeah. It's not that I can't use it, but I will use this one. Gwen Tooth says, hi, Kim and Cal. Hi, and Gwen. Embroidery seems to be in these days. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Very much. Yeah. It's because it's being reclaimed, right? Yeah, um, it's of... been denigrated by as a, as being a, a lesser art. And, you know, frankly, any art can be a lesser art. Yeah. <laughs> and any art can be a great art. It's a question of the, the artist and what they do with it. Exactly. Um, Jane, Jane says, I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one so indecisive today. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I have company too then. Thank you, Jane, for the, letting me know. The power of indecision. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's our superpower today. Okay. Got my plate. Cherie says, AGO, the AGO is hosting an exhibition entitled Portraits of Resilience. Yes. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Even better, post a piece that demonstrates resilience. Bragging rights for showing at the AGO. 
Yeah. yeah, I saw that, um, and I definitely i I recommend submitting something. I know a number of people who have already, and um, because it's it's kind of a record of our times in a really special way. You think portraits are perfect because we're we've been so isolated. Um, like someone we know's mother died last night. And I don't think she'd seen her because she's in a long-term care home. I'm, I don't even know if she's seen her since the first lockdown. Like, I'm not sure what the... How stringent it but was. But she's obviously but, seen her way less way, yeah, in the exactly. past year, oh, so it, even hard. if she's seen her at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. All right, I'm going to start off with some of this. I'm using some quinacridone magenta for anyone who's curious. That off. And I'm working in acrylic paints. I'm using the Liquitex Basics line. Have you got your stack of roller rollering paper? Yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you for asking. And I'll put my plate on this sheet of white paper so you'll be able to see it better. Much better. That's great. Yeah. Exactly. All right, maybe I'll use the little brayer. I rarely use it. Today would be a good day to use it. Okay. Oh, it feels nice. It's very squeaky, though, so sorry <laughs> about the squeaks. I guess I need to oil the squeaky bit. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a problem, though, using it with acrylics, getting a little oil dribbling out at some point? Well, I clean the plates with baby oil. Right. Well, maybe it's not such a big deal then. Maybe not. I don't know. You've got to put some oil in it. So, I mean, I guess you could try graphite, but but then you have powder. <laughs> yeah, then you have other issues. So that's exactly. not really yeah. ideal either. All right. Let's start off. Ruth Oppenheim has joined us. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Welcome Ruth. Welcome aboard. She says, hi, Kim and Cal finally got here. You're you're just in time. Kim's just getting getting herself. Doing my underway. first print. <laughs> yeah, just about. So. I'm just going to uh, pull this print and see what I've got. Um, I'm just warming up, in fact, Ruth, um, with my very first prints. Let's just use my hands first. So what's the plan here, Kim? <laughs> there is no plan. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing. I was, I was, um, there's a, um, an artist, uh, professor who I've admired for many years and, um, both her work and her teaching actually. And she was talking about the fact that she loves gel plate monotype printing because She's the sort of person who always really plans things out and really very methodical about how she does things. And, you know, and for someone who's a print, a, a, a traditional printmaker, that's, that won't sound odd. <laughs> uh, but for someone who's maybe, a, you know, a, a drawing is a primary medium and um, por portraits and other kinds of drawings. Um it's sort of less, less common, I guess, to be really, really planned out. Like, mm -hmm. of course you can have a, a thumbnail or something, but yeah. So this is the only time when she totally breaks free of all that, because as she said, it feels like she's, it, the drawing is making itself and, and it's just so fast paced and so on. It's not fast paced the way I'm doing it right at the moment. <laughs> No, but, but like but we, it is we, a fast paced Kim process. and I had a little session to uh, great shapes. Yeah. So that's like, a nice just start. So simple, but great. Yeah. Yeah. 
they look they can they could be negatives or positives. I was just is, gonna say, what are the negatives? What are the positives? Yeah, right? Yeah, totally. So I'll peel these off. And um, James asks, do you treat the gel plate with a base of something before putting paint on? I'm taking notes today since I have a brand new gel plate I've yet to use. No, no. Um, you you give it a wipe with. Um, uh, Baby wipes work better than paper towel with water, but you can do it with paper towel and water just to make sure there's no lint on it. Now the paper towel might have lint. So, you know, consider your paper towel as well, right? Test it out. Um, and no, you don't have to, if it feels really, really sticky, then I would recommend you give it just a, a wash with some soap and water and, uh, dry it off just wipe it dry it doesn't have to be perfectly bone dry and put a little bit of baby oil on it or uh, if the fragrance is a problem light mineral oil and uh, and then wipe off rub it in and then wipe off the excess and then you're fine but that's only if the plate yeah, feels you should, really it should sticky. be fine just out of the, yeah. out of the box. Yeah, I've only ever had going, one right? that was a problem that way, so yeah. out of several. I was I was saying earlier, though, that we did a sort of gel plate printing session together a few days ago. Yeah. And you do a lot more of it than I do. I only do it occasionally, and I just loved it. I, yeah. You know, I've done it two or three times, and I just love how um, it... it you just do something and then you do something else and you're off to the races. It's just like, yeah, just Oh, I could, I could do this. I could yeah. do that. Oh, what about this? And okay. I think the next step on that one's going to be this. And next up on that other one's going to be, that needs a dark, you know, and because it, you're not constantly stopped at every stage by a whole rigmarole you have to do, uh, because I don't have to keep cleaning this plate in between everything. You know, yeah, I oftentimes can... it's better if you don't and you get those yeah. pickup prints, which you no know, doubt you'll be doing some, one at yeah. some point along the way that exactly. gives you all these amazingly textural gifts from resi res residue from previous printings. It's uh, no, it's a, it's a really um, playful, creative, uh, place to be yeah yeah if you're feeling stale i recommend it as a or if you're feeling rusty that's another time gerda asks where does the gel plate come from uh so traditionally gel plates are homemade and there are lots of recipes out there um some are better than others some suit you better than others um but they're they're definitely out there you Google them, check YouTube for it. But um, there are a number of companies who now make permanent gel plates, which is very handy uh, because the other ones eventually you might have to store in the fridge or they get moldy. Um, some recipes have an anti-mold thing uh, because it's gelatin, right? And um, on the plus side, uh, when a plate kind of gets too, too uh, damaged to be useful or for you to like working on it you just break it up and you can remelt it and make it into a new cool as long as it isn't moldy so um so the companies that make them are they make them out of a polymer that in, is includes mineral oil in it and that's why mineral oil is a powerful uh, cleaner for it so so that blue that you laid on picked up the res residue from the that's right it's called a pickup print. Yeah, it's it's great. It's just the quality of wine and is wonderful. So I had an idea when I started putting the blue violet down, tinted blue violet, that I'm go actually going to um, do that sequence again, but change it up a bit. So where's my Quinn? There's my Quinn. I guess I better get another. Oh, Rebecca tells me that uh, you were showing my prints and, and your gel in your quest art workshop. weren't they nice <laughs> weren't they good his second ever gel printing session and uh guess what he's a brilliant designer and colorist who knew <laughs> no it's all it all has, it has a lot to do with the instructor <laughs> you didn't need me 
Except just at the beginning. Just to get you no, get you on the you, right track. You underestimate your creative flow enhancing abilities. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. It's one of the reasons we love you. Yeah, it's not right. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Okay, so I'm going to try that again. We'll change it up a bit. That's why do the same old thing when you can change it. That's the whole... There we go. Fun of them. Yeah. Fun of it, isn't it? I think so. A little scraffito with the... Uh... Oh, I'm sure I'll get to scraffito, but here we go. So you're putting the paper on at an angle, or was the plate at an angle? The plate was at an angle, right, too. Right. <laughs> I know. I have I have a reference sheet of paper that's at a completely <laughs> different angle. It's supposed to be the paper I, re I register to. Right. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> you know, I, I can be too anally retentive with my creative processes. And so with the gel plate printing, I found it was like, I'm just going to line it up by eye. I'm not going to yeah, worry about like, that's and, right. and okay, there it's going to be like close to be good enough for this. Exactly. And, and that is a great antidote. It's a medium that just lures you into a kind of freedom. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are people it doesn't, but everybody I've seen, um, find something in it that just gets them all excited and feeling very free. And um, I love any, any process any or media that does that, that because yeah. people can get so uptight. Oh, now this one really Ooh. turned out nicely with the lines. Let me put the white paper yeah, you've behind got a it. little bit of texture. Just a little bit of interior paper. texture. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's going to be really nice to pick up. <laughs> but now I'm going to, um, and so those lines are basically where the paper that you're pressing over top of the stencil can't quite get into the where the edge of the stencil is. Well, there's made, like right? a build up of the yeah, the paper can't get in to pick it up. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And then the mask itself is picking up the rest paint it. until it's got enough paint on here that it stops picking up paint. Um, it sort of seals. Um, so that's why it picked up less this time because it had a, a right. sort of primer coat before. So gradually it will make other things possible. So now I've got to think about my what's next? My next thing and I think I will Yeah. Is anyone else gel plating gel printing today as well? Yeah, that would be great to know. Yeah. I'd love to know. And, and if you're not gel printing, what are you doing? Uh, those of you who are doing, if you're chilling, awesome. Yeah, I know a couple of people are doing, um, now I, 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 obviously I don't because I can't remember. A couple okay. of people told us what they were doing, but a lot of people didn't. So Val asks, uh, Nellie says she's gel print, gel plate. Oh, printing. great. That's great. Um, Val asks, what paper do you use for your masks? I, oh my God, what paper <laughs> don't I use for my masks? Um, it, well, obviously I wouldn't use a tissue or a newsprint or anything like that. Um, you know what the ideal thing is? Uh, it's, it's um, Duralar, the glossy kind or the frosted kind. Um, it has just the right spring to it totally washable, sturdy, um, easy to lift off, won't curl up. There are all kinds of things that can happen. But how did I start out? And I still uh, work with just heavy paper. Um, and it's going to be absorbent until it gets enough paint on it to stop being absorbent. But that's fine. It kind of gets plasticized. By the acrylic By the paint, acrylic paint yeah. right? So, yeah. And I've also used um, my second favorite 
material for a, a durable mask or stencil is Tyvek. Yeah, Tyvek. Right? And it also depends on what you're looking for to some extent because different those different materials have different thicknesses, right? So they'll give you a different degree of line residue. Um, like they, like your red lines were like the, um, if you're using Tyvek, which is very thin, right? Those lines yeah. would be fine or maybe even not visible. I've also used, uh, uh, polyethylene page protectors, right? Um, you can use palette paper and, uh, ideally put the coated side down. Yeah, wet. it's nice and thin and has yeah. that really um, glossy side. You could use freezer paper, same principle, because it has a plasticized side. Um, you could use any paper if you apply packing tape to it, both one or both sides. Um, I've used Bristol board. I've used craft foam. I mean, man. <laughs> I'll use what's available. I've used straight bond. Now, those are not fun to work with. Because they absorb the water like crazy and, then they, tear easily, and they stick right? to the brayer and all that. But I, you know, in the interest of getting something done, I will do that. Hmm. One of the things I love about the gel plates is that they're transparent. So I can flip it over and, and see, see what, what I've got get. right? and decide based on that what I want to do next. And that's a good question. <laughs> so some of your peeps are doing as follows. Sharon McKinnon is painting and using some prints. Cool. Rebecca is working on a painting, pre-painting right now. Right? So uh, Great. under painting. And Marg says she's chilling with a cup of tea. Had portraits with Helen this morning. Oops. <laughs> We'll do, <laughs> we'll do jelly prints over the less than perfect results. Brain dead. <laughs> oh, well, it happens. Yeah. And it's not never wasted time, yeah, right? It, it never is wasted time. Because even if you That's don't great. get the... Even if you don't get the results you were looking for, you've your, your hands and eyes and brain have been working. And they'll work that much better the next time because of it, right? So... No, I haven't even followed my, anyone who's hit, Sharon is here from the workshop. If anyone else is here from the workshop, um, not everyone who's here can participate in the chat. So, um, so we won't know, but uh, I recommended that people prepare a pad of wet paper towel so that when they have a thing like this, they can wipe it off right away before the paint hardens. Clever. Looks like I did it in the nick of time. <laughs> so that you have a nice clean one. Ooh, yummy, yummy. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the blue violet isn't so transparent that it ends up yucky. Neutralizing but it, yeah. I'm going to go with one it way anyway. To find out, right? Nothing ventured, etc. I do love a zingy orange. Yeah. I know you do. <laughs> you look good in a zingy orange. Oh, there's a lot of zingy orange in my work, isn't there? There is. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Kay. <laughs> she says, I'm scanning tax documents. <laughs> well, at least something nice, pleasant is keeping your company, eh? <laughs> Once that's done, I'll switch over to something more arty, LOL. Excellent. Excellent. I need to get on with that, too. Let's not talk about taxes. This <laughs> yeah, is meant not. to be a sanctuary. Exactly. Right? Let's not. Tax Here ourselves. we go. Now, is that coming up all right? Of course it is. An uplifting experience. 
Yeah, is it funny? It is. That's a beaut. I like that. I'm loving that. The gifts, I tell you. Is it well lit? I'm on delay, but now I'm seeing shadowing? it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's looking pretty okay. good, actually. Yeah, yeah. All right, yep. good. So that's kind of fun once you start getting the layers in there and get relationships between things. And now I've got some spatial depth happening. Yeah, that's it's got which depth. Which gets exciting. And, and uh, it helps to have a designer eye because you sort of know where to, your intuition is good about what, what shape to put where and so on. So Yeah, yeah. well, and, you know, just just try things. Yeah. Just try to get them to interact in interesting ways. So I'll just hold it up again and say, look at the, for those of you who can look, because I know you're also doing stuff, but those who can, notice how um, the little sections of shapes that show through a portion like that, that's a functional shape as well, as is that little shape, as is that little shape. You know, like each of those things is a functioning shape as opposed to a weird pinchy kind of like eh shape. Um, so not that you can never have pinchy shapes, <laughs> but they need to somehow survive as a shape that has some life to it. So uh, lots of reaction to that. Wow, says Nelly. Rebecca says looks great. Vera says she likes that one. Um, and uh, Vera asks, can you print on canvas? Yes. Um, it's canvas <laughs> being textured. Uh, gel plate printing in particular benefits from a smooth surface. So you can print on canvas. It's better to print on canvas that already has been smoothed over with some paint to fill in some of those valleys. Otherwise, what happens is you only get the print on the peaks on the tops, of yeah. the of and not in the valleys so it becomes dots airy dots um you know not not necessarily very nice um so that's something to bear in mind um what i would probably do is um put some gel some medium to stiff gel in and with a knife work it into the canvas so that um, I'm smoothing out the surface, sort of like um, drywall repair, right? <laughs> or plastering, lay it on and smooth it out with a nice broad knife and then um, let that dry and then print onto that. That's what I would do. Gwen says she's chilling out after waiting three hours for a pre-scheduled doctor's phone appointment. Yes. Oh, <laughs> we'll paint later. three hours. But at least wow. you're at home yeah. rather than in a waiting room. But but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. in a constant state of not uh, knowing yeah, when no, things exactly. are going to happen. And De Debbie has filled the bucket with, of water to wash her stencils and it leaks. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, That's a sad she, thing. Yeah, that is a sad thing. I hope that uh, we got it under control. Cherie says, love the colors as well in that piece, recent piece. And Vera Thank says, you. I see, yes. Just for fun, I'm going to do a, a kind of painterly print. I'm going to put way too much paint on for starters. So I think that'll be a good idea. <laughs> I'll just look away. Yeah. yeah. Printmaking is not a time when you want um, impasto paint on your <laughs> plate. It just doesn't yield. You want visual texture, not physical texture, except for very small amounts. So, Kim, you sometimes use things like ribbed and meshes right yeah i was wondering have you come across anything that has like circular flat oh, that makes me excited high points so well that, i have that one that's like... dotted right oh, and cool. of course of course bubble wrap right is kind of that i was thinking in, in terms of like being able to get sort of print half tone dot type effect Ooh, that's so yummy isn't it that's kind of fun. That is kind of fun. Uh, 
but won't it be if it's that thick? Will it's it... way too thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little print of what's there and right. I'll work with what's left. Right. Yeah, because that'll fill in somewhat, right? Yeah. Well, in fact, what I'm what I'm doing is taking the peaks off oh, okay. when I so do this just, print. You're, you're not really smushing this down heavy. Big time. No, because that'll yeah. eliminate the lines exactly. I just made. I don't want to eliminate the lines. I just yeah. want to. I put way too much paint on, so and and got excited about putting my comb in before I had <laughs> reduced the amount of paint. So this, welcome to my world. <laughs> There's definitely a factor of walking and chewing gum, like. No, I just think that it also just sort of happens, right? Like, you're you're in the moment. Yeah, yeah, which is a good place to be. Yeah. Ooh. So that's um, a lot. There's my better than strange I would have thought. Textured thing. Yeah, I really would have thought they would smush together more than that. So. Well, no, I I burnished very lightly. Right. Very lightly, yeah. because I'm just trying to take the, I still have a globby bit of paint there. So it's not going to be a clean print. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be, have a bit of globby in it. But hey, that's a thing too, right? Um, you know, uh, Tim's globby print conversations com. about uh, composition and uh, contrasts, every tactile and visual quality is a potential source of contrast. Um, so globby is a source of contrast with uh, smooth, clarity, smooth, smooth even, clear yeah. paint, you know? In it's print. something that we both uh, encounter in our teaching a lot is um, getting getting beyond the most obvious contrasts of like value contrast and maybe color Which are contrast. important, absolutely, absolutely they're, important. They're key tools in your toolbox. But box, don't get but, stuck there. But yeah, there's so many other ones. Direction, yeah. texture, shape, <laughs> shape, size, density, density, frequency. Yeah, so many. Oh, it just goes on and on. Anyway, um, that's still kind of globby. I don't know. I think I might just uh, do a little touch touch print of that. Just to take. Yeah, there. Got some more paint on there. <laughs> Because I know something not perfect is going to happen when I stick this on. But I'm going to do it anyway because I'm kind of ornery. <laughs> stick my comb in the water. Word. It's good advice to give. Don't let the paint dry on your knives and your combs and whatever. It's just pleasing looking at this, you know? Um, hey, welcome aboard, Nancy. Nancy Moniz just joined us. Hi! Moniz. Yes, I know. Sorry. I, I... I've been away. I'm, I'm messing up. fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> she says, just jumped in. Great to see you both again. I'd like to try gel plate printing using leaves and petals from my garden. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was thinking I should do a workshop that's focused on that. So she then she continues to ask thoughts yeah. and suggestions for how to incorporate organic materials. Honestly, it is a, uh, worth, it, worth uh, a workshop, but... Um, just find things that have good shapes and good details. Um, you know, soft tooth edges to leaves, good vein patterns, and that aren't too unruly in terms of their three dimensions that you're able to flatten them reasonably against the, uh, like our Boston Ivy, the big leaves can be a little tricky to, to, flatten but I love printing them and um, is it with gel plate printing that you were getting those amazing um, registration like actually getting all those the cells of the leaves or the yeah yeah it's astounding yeah 
it ends up being like a like a photographic process. Yeah, um, it definitely looked like it was a photo yeah. or a scan or something, for sure. So I, you know, there's that kind of thing, but then there are also things like grasses or that kind of leafage, and that's really fun. Um, don't put hard, pointy, crumbly things on. Yeah. That I, will never lead to anything that you'll be happy about. And the cleanup will be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And it might even, it's potentially, it could damage the anything plate. Anything that kind of sharp and stabby might yeah. embed itself in the Look, plate, I have right? some beautiful thistles over there, but I'm not sticking them <laughs> on my plate. <laughs> um, so this definitely needs something more. I, I sort of went somewhere. It's in a sort of awkward teenage phase is what I call it <laughs> when things need help but you know there's stuff there so um i'm going to find some shapes that i can or actually what i'll do is something else mm -hmm. i'll move the plate no i need to move the plate here nancy and, says uh ferns also seem like a no-brainer to try yeah Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And she yeah. says, no hard, pointy, crumbly things. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think that's probably the most important advice. Yeah. But also think in terms of things that can usefully flatten against the surface of the plate. So a pine cone is problematic, right? Right. Because right. you get the little tips. Also, it's a dry, crumbly, pointy thing. But <laughs> um, even if it weren't, <laughs> it would have that problem. Lori said, I love learning all the technical terms, texture, density, etc. Does Globby count too, LOL? That absolutely. is absolutely <laughs> uh, official jargon. You'll find it in any art speak uh, dictionary. And um, so I hope Search you'll... under G. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just nonstop technical language here. Term coined by mid, my uh, turn of the century artist Kim Lee Co. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Especially today, I didn't sleep well last night, so I, I noticed my brain has this weird, is that like a a duvet in my brain? <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you just add to your paint? I just added golden open medium which is um they have a whole line of paints and mediums called open which uh has slower drying times or longer open times that's the technical term uh than regular acrylics but you can add the mediums to regular acrylic paints so that means if you already have acrylic paints, you don't have to buy the whole set of open acrylics. I've definitely heard people say, oh, I'd like to paint with those open paints, but they're so expensive. And it's like, well, buy a medi buy the medium. Yeah, and just then buy can, one bottle of medium and you're all set. <laughs> and you, the thing about using the medium is you can add just a tiny bit if you want to just extend the open time just a little bit. Exactly. Or a lot or more if you want more, so. What am I looking for? I'm looking for an applicator. Oh, but I had a different idea in mind originally. So I better go with my original idea. Since when was because that? Because I right? want I do <laughs> tend to wander off into uh, I make interesting discoveries when I wander off, but I think today Oh, and sorry, I forgot to mention earlier, Yeah, uh, Susan Abbott has joined us. Hi, oh, Susan. great. Yeah, Hi, Susan. She says, Hi, I'm late to working on mini collages today. Oh, that oh, sounds fun. like fun. Okay, that will do. Oh, that looks great. Now, what happened to my print? I'm hoping this is going to rescue my awkward teenage... Stage print. I'm just trying to decide orientation how I'm positioning. Like I might want it to be like that. Okay, let's go with that. You know, you sort of have to decide before it dries. 
Well, you have more open time with this one. Yes, thank goodness. There's a you know a reason I did that. It's not going to be perfectly registered. I'm just very. It's going to be a slight offset, but that's fine. That's what's happening. Uh, normally, if I were if I were properly into my printing process, doing prints, I considered sort of more precious than this. I guess um, I would not be brayering with this slightly dirty brayer directly on the back of my print. <laughs> Although you see that demonstrated a lot on YouTube, um, <laughs> I would put a piece of paper over this and then do it onto that. Just a piece of my. There's sort of a sweet spot as far as how precious you get, right? Yeah. But, you know, this is, I'm still in, I'm in the late stages of my warm up now. <laughs> so now that's what's happened to my awkward teenage print. And now it's starting to get interesting. Like, yeah, definitely. So that's good. Plus, it has left me with a fabulous pickup print element. Uh, Look nice. at that, yeah. right? So Susan Abbott said, uh, you're getting pretty good open time with that mixture. Got to get some. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it um, it's the real deal. For example, um, I've mixed some of that into paints on a palette when, God, remember when I used to paint paintings on canvases <laughs> and things? So I'd have a bunch of colors mixed up in my in my palette that had some of this mixed in with it. And because of the kind of palette I use too, which is a butcher's tray and I can put uh, put a press and seal onto, onto it and seal it. But I could come back 10 days later and the paint's still there a hundred percent usable. So um, if it's left open, the, the palette the yeah. and this is in it, it will certainly last uh, I, I know I can use it the next day. Um, but it depends on how much you put in. If you only put one drop in a big bunch of paint, well, it's just going to slow it down a bit, right? So. But one of the things I know that uh, oil painter, that drives oil painters crazy about acrylics is like, I'm trying to blend this thing and the stuff's dry already yeah. and it's crumbling exactly. and, <laughs> and it dry. And I would hazard to guess, Sue, you can feel free to chime in if you like here, that printmakers who are accustomed to um, oil-based printing inks have a similar issue <laughs> with acrylic paint. As Sue actually mentioned during the, uh, I hope you won't mind my sharing that, that uh, during the workshop last week, she was using it as an opportunity to try and get a handle on working with acrylics as mm -hmm. the uh, printing, mm -hmm. printing color. So I'm going to use some golden fluid paint so this is this is the good stuff not like my liquitex basics which um I, I love it's a great viscosity for working with the gel plates it's, it's medium viscosity neither high nor low and um <clears throat> but the the pigment load is isn't great it's not as bad as some paints seriously if you um work with acrylics my experience uh, through uh, paint students have had that I've tried, tried to not get Windsor and Newton acrylics. First of all, the base, there's something wrong with the base. Uh, it doesn't feel right. And the pigment load is terrible. Um, so just, I'm sorry if you already have some, but um, wow. I really recommend not getting them. Were that, was it a student grade or? It's just the ones, right, you know, right, it's the yeah. common ones that you find right. in Curry's. Oh, that's, that's disappointing. You know, and I'm familiar with Windsor and Newton from oil painting. So I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, great, you know. Another competitor, which is yeah, good. Yeah, so it's good for us if, if there are lots of sources for things because yeah. it means, you know, we'll be able to find some things with one company that we can't find with the other They're company. They're kind of a deluxe name in watercolors. Yeah, Exactly. And, and, oil, and they're a good one yeah, in oil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I was really, wow. really disappointed. So Lori says, speaking of supplies, someone told me I could use white hard soap as a substitute for Taylor's chalk. 
he said, did not work for me today. It seems to me that like soap, like if you're trying to make a, a temporary line on something. Like then, ivory soap. Um, like you would in Taylor's chalk. Yeah. I mean, I guess it would wash out, but if you're but if you're bringing other medium in before it's washed out, then that'd be a problem, right? Like it, it would resist, might resist like paint or other things, whereas a powder yeah. would just kind of get absorbed in the paint. So yeah, it depends what's coming after it, I guess. I actually use chalk pastel. It doesn't, you know, it's powder, so it doesn't adhere under stress the way Taylor's chalk does, but. Um, that I just find it convenient and it makes a good line. So as long as I'm not going to do a lot of things with it. Ruth says she's got to run. Thanks. Lovely seeing us. Yeah. Lovely seeing you. Ruth. So Thanks glad for you joining could us. Come. Um, Sue Smith says the result of using acrylics for me was that it speeded me up considerably. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you, you know, you, the time, you have to. time's <laughs> a wasted. <laughs> you roll her that on, kick, Tick, yeah. Tick. Okay, right. get that paper down. <laughs> I'm actually going a bit slow here today because just because I am slow today um, for what I would normally do. Yeah, and and for me, I love that's another thing I loved about using the acrylics and the gel plate was like how quickly things happen. Like you can't overthink stuff. And you know, and also and also like you, you have three or four or five six pieces on the go. Yeah, you can reach for the one that you did like two prints ago and it's dry yeah and and go to the next layer so absolutely yeah so and it's also a function of the thin layers you use in this yeah so. it's uh it's all it's lovely because it it's not a materials hog in the sense that the you know this medium or the paints you use very small amounts mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of use out of what you put on because of these Pick up prints. Oh, wow. Look at the crazy lines I got in this. So this is my wow. pickup print. So where are those lines coming from? From the brayer. Oh, wow. Cool. That's great. Like, that's a real yeah. gift. It's a real nice contrast to those uh, organic yeah. shapes. Yeah. That's really interesting. Sue says... It's, oh, she, Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's, it's the same comment. I thought she had okay. added another one. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's also interesting because the, um, you know, the unbleached titanium, which is the light color here, you can see how the color has shifted because of the Payne's gray, which is a blue underneath it. Yeah, so there's this great. greenish cast. It's a little darker than the unbleached titanium. You got some is. dendrites going on in there or is it just me? Yeah, because where the paint is thicker, the, the it pulls... Mm -hmm. Now, it's not as vivid as this, but this is lovely pickup print kind of stuff. Oh, I've got a blob of orange. <laughs> Random blobs of orange is just like a classic situation. Um, sorry, I'll go for white. Just so you can see what I'm dealing with. Those of you who, who are interested and are able to look. Um, so that's what I'm looking at here. Are you wondering whether you're going to do a pickup print now or later? Is that what you're trying to decide? I'm thinking about that large piece of paper. I put the large paper. Let's see about whether I want to start my larger okay that really can i pass this to you to put somewhere to dry because mm -hmm. um there's a little bit of wet orange on the back so just watch that it's a good thing I, I didn't realize that until i'd already put it down but where i put it down was okay was so. okay that's <laughs> that worked out well <laughs> okay Getting myself into a mess here excellent Ooh, that's a pretty great little piece that uh, paints gray. Edge? This here? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, baby. Here's my little collage composition for the day. <laughs> oh, it's tasty. <laughs> Hand that right over. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to steal all my stuff. 
I'm waiting for him to say, well, that'll make a change. <laughs> no, wasn't even thinking it. Wow. But come now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pause and have a drink because I think that that's... <sighs> Gerda asks, how and where do you store the plate so it doesn't mold? Well, the permanent ones don't mold. Um, that said, I know someone who managed to make one mold. So um, it must have been wet and airtight, but I just save it in the packaging. Um, now, one thing that I, you know, comes with in this hard plastic packaging with a couple of sheets of hard plastic, hard plastic, not rigid, it's like acetate. Um, and, um, and just bear in mind when you, when you put the plate back on those, you don't want to, you want to minimize trapping air bubbles because those will make an impression in the plate and change the texture of it. Why don't you pull but, that plate out and show, show the, show it sandwiched between the two acetate type pieces. Okay. Oh, just. There's the bottom one. There's the top one. And you can see the bubbles. See the air bubbles. That's what you don't want. Now the other one that I pulled out today, which I had very carefully cleaned and conditioned and put away with great care, um, I left a film, a very thin film of baby oil on the plate, very thin film. And then I was able to lower the plate onto the plastic and minimize bubbles right, right. much better. Okay, I'm getting this dirty. I never had my drink because of that, so I'm going to do that now. Sorry about that. Hmm. Cheers. So refreshing. That's great. Okay, I've got this big piece of paper here now. Maybe I'll set this aside for the time being and get out my bigger plate. Is that a 9 by 12 or 8 by 10? It's an 8 by 10. Right. I have a 12 by 12. Nice. Which I love. But that's actually a bit hard to handle in this. You can see how my table is like crowding me here. So the stuff on my table is crowding me. So... I'm just going to work with my 8 by 10. Yeah, one of the artists I know who makes her own plates is Robin Hollingdrake. Um, those of you who are in the West End of Toronto or in Mississauga, you may be at Oakville, you may be familiar with her. She paints abstracts, ab abstract figurative and now quite a lot of floral garden based uh, imagery and she does printmaking makes large relief blocks and um, prints prints onto canvases um, presumably as well as paper but she incorporates them into paintings and um, she also makes her own gel plates uh, because she likes them large right that makes sense yeah and that's why I will eventually make my own <laughs> gel plates because I will need them large. I can I can see it in our future. Cal can attest to that uh, natural progression. Yep. Kim is always like, is there some way to make this really big? <laughs> Just thinking about layers. Oh, yes, I forgot. I didn't pull it out, but I definitely want this. <laughs> what is that? What are those? I know you got them at the dollar store, but I can't, I don't know what they're supposed to, what they're actually, actually They're are. placemats. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, isn't that a fun placemat? Great. Now, the only problem is 
It's very the whole thick. point of a placemat is that it's supposed to catch stuff, right? <laughs> it doesn't catch stuff, but it's pretty neat. So, there we go. Well, I guess it defines a place and adds grip, but. Yeah, it's basically a decor item. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. That looks like fun. Judy says, what a great idea. Use a placemat as a stencil. Kim has a real eye. Like, she just loves going to, in the before times. <laughs> yeah. When going, I went to stores. Going to a dollar store and shopping for inadvertent art materials. And My just, favorite and, thing. And Hardware like, stores, she's kitchen got, stores. She can see the potential in in so many different things. And, and this is a perfect example of it. But she's always like, oh, I could use that as a stencil or, oh, I could paint with that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yep. I am. Uh, Dollar stores and home centers, right? Oh, I love those. Home centers slash hardware. Well, stores. that goes all the way back to when I was a little taught and tagged along with my father to the to Canadian Tire. Like one of my favorite things to do from the age of three. So. I'm hardcore. <laughs> Cherie says the dollar store should give you a kickback. <laughs> That's right. It should be the half dollar store for me. <laughs> okay. That's the one I'm looking for. Cal's trying to rescue my wireless keyboard from, from my well, painterly and, activity here. Well, and also free up some space for you, right? Because yeah, and you can push it up further that way. So I'm mixing it without mixing it well. I I want intermixed color, so it's painterly instead of blended over blended and I've got some lovely slash marks in here so that'll add to it oh I feel like I should put that on a little plate maybe I'll put it on this one great idea that's another an alternative to um braying it off on braying it off onto a sheet you can brayer it onto your a second plate that you will let dry well, I might just, before I let it dry, I might just introduce some things, <laughs> you know. There. Introducing. There we go. Now I'll let it dry. All right. What have I got here? A placemat, it looks like. It looks like. And it's big enough that you can decide where the center goes. That's nice. That's right. You can make it off center. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it there. And then try not to wiggle it. <laughs> that's that's one of that the keys. Is the key. Um, can you get the deli paper from over there? In the Ziploc bag. I think it's... Oh, now it could be in a drawer. Should have thought of this in advance. I was trying to gather everything in time, but I didn't quite manage it. Just in case he's not able to find it, I'll get my big piece of paper out. Yay!
There we go. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. This has a lot of little negatives, so I wanted the thin paper for this. So Cal and I are very excited that we can say we have confirmed appointments for our vaccines. And um, so next week we will have dose number one. My um, One of my cousins texted me to let me know that... Uh, they have a vaccine clinic at the U of T Mississauga campus in one of the buildings and they're booking appointments um, only two weeks in advance, up to two weeks in advance. They have lots of time slots. They seem to have quite a lot of capacity. And of course, picking a, a weekday afternoon is a helpful or morning is a helpful thing. for getting an appointment, so. Rebecca says, congrats. And Val says, I had a confirmed appointment for today, got there with my confirmation, but I was not in the system. Yikes. Sorry to hear that, Val. That's like uh, oh, very that's... galling. I'll say. Kay's had her first shot too. Excellent. Uh, one of the things about that actually made me uh, feel better is uh, the booking system, while they're now part of the provincial system of providers, they're not switching to the provincial booking system, which I think has been problematic. Um, uh, they have their own booking system. And so um, uh, I'm hopeful that it will be reliable. And Val says now she can't book an appointment there. So that's awful. Because you got a confirmed appointment. Yeah. Oh, man, that just. So have you talked to someone? Have you talked to your doctor or public health in your area about that? Like about what to do, what you can do, what they can do for you? I know the prop. One of the problems is they have not um, made GPs part of the um, part of the system of distributing vaccines. Pharmacists, but not GPs. Funny, eh? Um, because you know we go get our other vaccines from our GP. Yeah, it's exactly. it seems like a perfectly normal. Well, says there are no appointments available. <laughs> And yet they're talking about, um, you know, some places they have lots of open capacity. Um, and of course we have mountains of vaccines sitting in freezers not being used. So that makes no sense. Yeah. I'm sorry for you and hope it gets sorted out soon. Yeah. Okay. Cherie says she saved her syringe to put in my COVID time capsule. That's a great, that a great idea. idea. That's a very artist idea. Okay. That never would have occurred to me. But I'm now stealing I'm totally, that idea. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause I, I love saving all sorts of medical, medical stuff paraphernalia like my hospital bracelets and um i actually i'm sad that our dentist retired because he got me when i had a um a cast done for of my mouth in order to get i had a couple of things i don't know i had crowns and i i had a bite plate thing um he he's not an artist but he's a singer so he has a creative streak and he's 
sort of figured out without my ever mentioning it that I might be interested in keeping the cast plaster thing. And I, and I just couldn't believe it. I was so pleased. But that's the kind of dentist I had. Bell said, at least her husband, John, got it. He got it. Got it. So, yeah. He was in the system, but you weren't. Oh, man. Okay. I'll just give you a heads up that it's 320. Is it really? That, all, that happens every time. Every time it's like, how can it possibly be that late? Yeah. So I guess what I had in mind, it was, was I was planning out for a three hour session or something. Oh, well, I'm going to start, right? Debbie says she got her first shot in the drugstore after waiting in line for three hours. Now booked for my second shot in July, which is great. Yeah. It's great to be booked for the second one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I look forward to it. <laughs> okay. I don't know, uh, you know, you might not real, those of you who are gel plate printing, you might not realize that you can use a brush as a tool for applying paint and um, removing paint in interesting ways. And that's what I'm doing with the negatives. I took that negative print, mm -hmm. which has all sorts of lovely speckles now. Um, it's got relief too because of the way it's uh, yeah, pimpling the paper. The, yeah, that will reduce a little bit As when it dries, it dries yeah. but not it won't reduce it completely. Sue, I think you're right, Sue. She says Sue Smith says to me, pharmacists are part of moving to private health care. Maybe yeah. we can move to publicly funded pharmacies. That would be good. Wouldn't that be amazing? We just need... Different leadership. <laughs> yeah, we need leadership that understands the vital difference between um, public programs and service delivery and businesses. And anyway, so many of the people who are touted because they're as, as being great to lead government because they're business businessmen usually, um, and they're not very good businessmen. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, why you know they're failed businessmen? That's why they're in politics. Yes, yeah, exactly. If they were really doing a great, like Warren Buffett's not running for president, right? <laughs> There's a reason for that. He's quite happy and busy running a hugely successful company. <laughs> Vera Walton says, Markham Cornell was really good. No waiting at all. Oh, great. fabulous. Yeah. Cherie, wow. Cherie says, her dentist is an artist as well. He's an exhibiting photographer. She said, wow. I want someone with a sense of aesthetic to do my dental work. It's true, yeah, right? Yeah. Sculpting <laughs> and making yeah. the teeth match and all yeah, of that. Exactly. You're quite yeah. right. So, um, wow, I'm actually loving what's on the plate right now. I'm just going to wipe this while it's uh, still wet uh, because it's a bear when it's dry to try and wipe these things off. So much easier hmm. when it's wet. Jane uh, says, Yeah. and this is something I read about in Germany, but I never thought it would happen here. She says, Cloverdale Mall now has a vaccine center as of today, and they have art on display. This produced by Humber Valley Art Club. I, and that's great. Like several months ago, I, I forget whether it was COVID testing or planned for vaccinations um, in Germany. They, they were having to set it up in a big public, big space, like a big, like a auditorium or something yeah. so that they could be distanced. And they partnered with artists to um, have artwork on display so that people, while they're standing in line, yeah, have something to look at, and I thought yeah. that's so brilliant. That would it never is. happen here, so I'm really glad to hear it happened very here. Exciting. Jane. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> and Val says in response to Vera, yeah. it was Cornell where she got screwed up. <laughs> so really, so Vera had a great experience, and Val had a terrible one. Terrible one. Oh. I'm going to show you this plate because yeah. I'm really excited. That I, looks amazing. I don't. I can't. It partially dry, so I can't print from it directly. 
Oh, it would be a pickup print to get this? Yes. Right. So, I know That's, you're on delay. Does that look good that on looks the yummy. camera? Oh, delicious. Oh, and now it just crisped up nicely. So, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm seeing see. all the little dendrites now. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, you know, that's sort of the fun of, of mixing the paint in a loose sort of way. And then um, removing from the negatives and then you get this depth to it. So now I have to think very carefully about what my next color will be. Because now this is what happens. I had an idea in my head of what I was going to do on the <laughs> sheet of paper. But what happened on the plate is different and maybe more interesting. And so now I have to It's always these ideas. You, you start with this trajectory. Then you see something. So you're off on that trajectory. Then you do something else. And then you're off on another. <laughs> so it's like this always shifting target. Always isn't shifting. Yeah. yeah. Noe says, lovely. And Gerda asks, can't you spray it with a fine mist? And uh, you could, but you're actually going to let this dry, right? Well, the thing is, if it's parts of the paint are dry, so yeah. all that does is dampen just, the surface, right, but it doesn't right. won't allow the paint to lift right. from the surface. But so a that's pickup the print reason. will lift it, but now yeah. you're going to let it dry, right? Yeah, I'm going to let that dry. Yeah. What I'd like to do is print shape. So you need your shape binder. Right here. I do. So Gerda, what, she, what she's going to do is let that paint dry and then put more wet paint over top of it that will then be at the bottom. And, and then, do what's and called a pickup pick print. print, which will lift everything if it works well, or most of it. So what's there on the plate will be on top and whatever she laid down, like if she lays down a dark red, dark red will be seen through the gaps and, and through any transparent areas. And uh, I need my 12 by 12 plate. Um, it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> 12 inch plate backing up. That's right. <laughs> the paper isn't even 12 inches in one direction. But... You are crazy girl yeah good thing i moved that keyboard for you it is good it is good and i'm going to ask you of the clean hands if you can um tear out a piece of that paper oh, for I me i can do that because this paper of course now has paint all over it all right so this is the 12 by 12 plate um this one's by gel press i have a couple by gel press uh, maybe three by Jelly Arts. Uh, so I never an finished answering that question about about where I get who get who makes plates. I guess. Um, yeah. So Jelly Arts, Gel Press, Jelly Arts, and Speedball are the three I am familiar with. There are I have noticed one or two other companies, uh, but I can't speak to their quality. I'm going to assume the speedball one is good because they are a printmaking yeah it would be surprising company. If it wasn't. So okay. here I put this one away with big bubbles in it. Uh oh. Um this is before I figured out my system with the baby oil. So it's going to have effects on the printing. You can just tell from the sound of it that this is a bigger plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes a bigger sound. I'll just give you that to put up. An there. artist in resonance. <laughs> yes. Uh, some of you may not know that I've started taking singing lessons, and um, which I highly recommend as a way to. Uh, de-stress and forget about everything else that's going on in your life. That's essentially why I took it up. Although I've that and I've, the fact that you sing really beautifully. Ah, uh, a sweetheart. Uh, I love to sing. I've always loved to sing. Um, and you know, if I could have had singing lessons at age 11, that would have made me very happy. But 
Instead, uh, you know, 50 something. All right, where's my. Now is always the best time. Well, not always, but often. Well, it's the second best time. Yeah, anyway. exactly. So this is a case, uh, I think, was it Ger Gerda was asking? Someone was asking about, do I do anything to prepare the plate? So this one, um, it has a little bit of detritus on it, a couple of hairs. <laughs> so um, I was not really assiduous with my cleaning when I put it away. Um, all of that will affect the impression of when I make <laughs> my print. So if you like the distressed look, it's fine. If you don't like the distressed look, then you'll take more care than I did in this case. <laughs> Debbie says, I started ukulele lessons, so I play and sing such classics as You Are My Sunshine and Baby Beluga. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I bet you the grandkids love it. So yeah, that wonderful. sounds Debbie, perfect. Yeah, for... that's great. <laughs> um, I, my first song that I've been working on is Stand By Me. And my second song that I've just started working on is one of my favorite songs of all time, which is Fire and Rain. So um, I'm quite excited about that. Thanks, Gerda. Nice that you could join us. Yes. And, uh, you can always watch the last few minutes uh, later and see where she says, got to go just when it's getting exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. that. It's like that. Okay. Kim's going into overtime. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you've got to go, I totally understand, but I'm sort of You're rolling a, now. So I'm going to roll, gonna roll no for a little longer um, till I get to, so I'm either so tired I can't keep going or I, the jelly roll. Or I just get to a spot where I feel like I can pause at least, you know. And Vera's got to leave. So thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks so That's much great. for coming. <laughs> and uh, it, if you enjoyed this at all, please uh, give the video a like on your way out. That would be really nice. It um, helps spread the word in the YouTube algorithm. They will distribute it to people, other people who are interested in gel plate printing, for example. So you're very welcome, Vera. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Rebecca says, careful with the ukulele. My husband now owns nine of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I guess they're smaller than guitars. Yes, that's better than nine guitars or a full drum set. <laughs> yeah. um, Debbie says, the song I have to sing to myself, of course, is shallow. I don't know. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah, that's, you know the, that's the Star is Born song um, with the... Uh, Bradley Cooper and uh, yes. Lady Gaga. Right. Yeah. The one you were singing. Yeah, Quite that's actually a song that I will probably learn. Like I I sing I sing it, but um, I'll learn, learn properly. properly. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is lay this down here. And that's uh, a figure that you cut out of a magazine, correct? Yeah. You make a mask that's out of it. That's a mask I've made. Now, I might as well take advantage of the fact that I've got space. And I'll compose this. This is a negative print I'm going to take before I do the positive print onto my paper, my good paper. Nellie says, thank you. You really got me going. And I, too, love to sing. Keep going. <laughs> Thanks, Nellie. <laughs> Thanks, Nellie. Debbie says. So glad you could make it. What is the pink color you're using? That is medium magenta. So it's a tinted magenta. Right. And um, where's my binder? Here it is. <laughs> and Debbie says, look forward to duetting with you on the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what the hell? I'll do this. Who knows, right? And where did I put my deli paper? Yeah, a piece of deli paper that already has some zigzags on it. Maybe that would be interesting. I'm pretty subtle. 
don't think we'll notice it much. Whoops. So the deli paper is nominally 12 by 12 inches, and this gel plate is nominally 12 by 12 inches. But I can tell you that they don't match. <laughs> so just be warned, uh, you know, gelatin is not like plexiglass. It's not a stiff precision material. Use the brayer for the first part of this. And just get those little negatives. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> That's fun. Nice, nice contrast between the figurative shape and those. Those weird archy yeah, shapes. Yeah. And yeah, it's quite fun sort of turning it like that's quite nice. I think. Spider girl. Well, no, the point being it's taking it away from the figure. Ah, okay. The yeah. figure is the source, but it's not necessarily the end. Ah. Right? Like that's quite interesting too. So anyway, I'll let that dry. That's really, um, I'm hoping when I lift this up, that I'm going to get something interesting. As sort of line work. Well, hopefully this one will get more than line, the figure. Right, because it's already been coated. Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> so just to show you, right? So because that mask, it was, I, I coated it in tape and it had paint on it, but right, um, that's what happens is it, it right? doesn't absorb into the yeah. mask. Why did I do that? I wanted to put it on this. Gosh. <laughs> so now it's a question of do I want to put this on first and then cover it up with, you know, partially cover it up with that? Or do I like what's going on here more for these are the tough decisions? Um, I'm going to go with my first, my first plan. And I'm going to print like this. She's going for it. I'm going for it. She's going you know, for you it. Just have to sometimes. Yep. Now the paint won't have dried too much in that. Well, you'll find out, right? I'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have added a little uh, open medium to it, but you know. Live and learn, as my grandmother used to say. She did used to say that a lot. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if anybody here has had to deal with uh, a loved one getting Alzheimer's, but Cal and I are going through that right now, and we're um, taking on responsibility for them in various ways, and... Um, Man, if you've had to do it, you it's hard. It's tough. Okay. Wow. That's the print I got. Great surface qualities. I feel like uh, the sort of... There's a fantastic pickup print waiting to happen here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Baby. Right? Because, you see, she, her her, her fill paint 
uh, printed really well because it was wet enough. The arch paint was too dry and stayed on the stayed plate. On the plate, yeah. But isn't that a beautiful conversation between her and totally. those arches? Yeah. So um, that's a, a terrific pickup print coming. So the thing about these, uh, because it's quick and responsive, it means you can try some things out. And if it doesn't work out quite the way you want it to, you can figure out how you want to change it to make it work more the way you want it to. And then just do that um, and see if that works better because it just, it isn't as laborious as some other processes. It so. seems to me that like most art processes are about, you have an idea and as you're working on it, the ideas change and evolve and you get yourself into trouble and you dig your wit self out of it. <laughs> Sometimes, oh, you yeah, you need to. Some get totally. pitched eventually, and but if you're not getting into trouble, you're not trying hard enough. Yeah, exactly. You're like, staying too close to your. It's like oh, comfort that zone. isn't what I planned. Okay, now what am I going to do with this? Right, and that's where the creativity comes in, definitely. Um, in response to Shannon says, "Been there, the uh, Alzheimer's, and then separately, lovely print." Thank and you. Nelly Lama says, "Yes." I think in terms of response to the print, but print, not yeah. positive. Uh, Rebecca says, very tough and scary when it's someone you may inherit from. Yes. 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 This is not someone I'm going to inherit from, but um, it. we've been very close. And um, she's part of my family, even an elder in my family, even though she's not blood. And what's um, disturbing is the fact that I am discovering more and more as, a, as we have to sort, help her sort through all the things in her house, her apartment. And I'm discovering how very like my brain, her brain has been, yet prior, hopefully prior to the Alzheimer's. <laughs> um, and so because I, I identify with, her, you know, I always thought we were very simpatico. We were, and that's why we we're close, but I'm realizing levels of similarity in terms of how our brains and curiosity and interests parallel each other's. Okay. So I've uh, put some clear medium on there. Uh -huh. And um, a clear medium pickup print. Yes. So I'm going to actually flip this over and apply the print. You're going to apply the plate to the print. Yeah. Apply the plate to the paper. Oh. Tricks. I don't think that the, I can come up with the perfect positioning right now, but um, let's just try that, shall we? That seems like a good thing to try. You've got enough on your plate. <laughs> and of course I've done it a little crooked, not a lot crooked, not straight, a little crooked, which is the most annoying kind <laughs> of positioning. But anyway, ask a designer, right? Yeah, that's right. Straight is good. And crooked enough, is good. enough crooked that it's, it looks intentional yeah. is okay. <laughs> but when it's just like in between those two, it's like, it's, it's girl worthy. Yeah. Her worthy that's pretty funny especially because one of my many many interests is in yurts and another word for yurt is gur <laughs> right debbie says had to get a geriatric psychiatrist for my mom who's having delusions and nightmares oh debbie oh my god that's so hard i had a very difficult phone conversation yesterday that really was, took the stuffing out of you. It did, um, you because were... the emotional um, kind of on the fly figuring out what's actually happening and it's, and it's changing all the time. So, you know, you diagnose and, the, and develop a response to the one thing and then it's changing. And, uh, oh, it took every ounce of emotional resources. Okay. Well, now I think I have an interesting problem, and that's that's a good place to be. So you can see the figure. 
There's a little ghost yeah. of the big arch at the top. Yeah. And now I'll go in and hopefully it will uh, yep. crisp up. Yep. So that you can see the. Huh. No, yeah, this quite is the surface. It is. And it's it. This is far from a done deal. In fact, what I'm thinking about doing is maybe pick up printing part of this over top the arches that have more fill. And, um, but I'll have to wait for this to dry. So I, this, this probably seems like a good point to have stop. Oh. Yeah. And have a drink because I'm parched now. <laughs> Debbie in response to the earlier topic says, absolutely. I think in terms of like the, trying to figure out where you're at in any given moment. And it just, it just keeps changing. Moment by moment. Yeah. And I'm concerned, you know, what you were talking about is what I'm concerned about. So. So that's why I'm singing and doing yeah. art. Yep. And trying to rest when I can. So lots of comedy breaks, lots of art breaks, that's lots right. of singing breaks, lots of breaks, period, right? Because, breaks. Yeah. Breaks. Yeah. Seriously. So how how did how did everything go for you guys? Uh in what you're those Cutting of you who up. are up to something. We had a slightly longer session today. Well, that's good because we're getting back. Yeah, it's nice we, to we, it was a layoff. So hanging out with our our favorite people. Yeah. So if you want to share anything uh, about how it went, we'd love to hear. Lori says she got her work cut and pinned. That's great. Debbie said, "Great." Did jelly printing? Shannon says, "I painted your beautiful voice." Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's lovely. I love that idea. That's lovely. Gwen says, very nice visiting with you all. Likewise, Gwen. Oh, likewise. Cherie says, made a great photo collage. Well oh, post. Good. Oh, good. Yeah. So anyone who wants to see it, that will be on the virtual collage jam Facebook group. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not uh, a member of that currently and would like to be, uh, just search for virtual collage jam. On Facebook. On Facebook in and the search bar, and it will show up as one of the one of the only things. Yeah, hopefully um, the only one. And the then top one. you can click to get to the group and then request to join. Yeah. And Nelly sa says, I did so much. Some are nice, others will be bases for drawing. Exactly. That's the great thing, yeah. right? Another beautiful thing about yeah, it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Lori says, found some random silk flowers in amongst the supplies oh that's fun. oh <laughs> always fun to find things you didn't know you had right and those could be fun to work with i i've actually thought of working with silk flowers on the on jelly, jelly plate yeah because they they do uh yeah. yeah just to see you know sue smith says uh transferred to sheena ply is lovely and canvas not yeah so that canvas issue, um, it would need extra, an extra base to it if it didn't transfer well on the canvas. It's probably because of the texture. Now, you may be looking at it and realize it's because of something else, and in which case that's fine. But if it's because of the texture, then filling those valleys more would be useful with, I recommend a, a heavy gel and a nice, um, you know, I'll use a nice applicator like this to uh, scrape it across. Rebecca says she got the first layer on her painting, which is great. Well, it's always nice good. to be getting it, yeah. getting it started, isn't it? And then you, 
you can yeah. build from there. Yeah. Debbie says, great to see you again, Cal too, of course. Likewise, Very Debbie. Very good to see you. Jane says, thanks guys. I watched and puttered in an altered book and I created an altered book I created from a soft covered realist drawings and watercolor book I found in the neighborhood neighbor's throw it pile that's oh, always fun yeah fun. scavenge salvage yeah uh, thing to play with yeah absolutely that's right that's great yeah i'll definitely get back to my altered books um it's not in one of the upcoming virtual studio parties i i might do gel plate again next virtual studio party because in two weeks i think it's in two weeks when's when's our march uh we miss a virtual studio party because of Easter. No, we had Easter, didn't we? It, it, I think it's the May 24th. No, it's the May so, 24th yeah, weekend. So, yeah. That's right. So I think you're... Do we still call that Victoria Day? Is that called something else now? <laughs> a Victoria Day for, for the time being. Okay. You are back again in two weeks. Okay, so in two weeks' <laughs> time. Um, not final, but just because I've got some things on the go now that I might want to uh, finish up or whatever so yeah sheree says going out to watch the flowers grow april showers see you next week see you next week sheree thanks sheree and yes that like i've noticed that the buds and flowers have been like suddenly that 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 shrub is opaque the, like the last 24 hours have been palpably different or it's noticeably huge different. difference yeah, yeah the um, rain sue says thanks i'll try gel take care of yourselves Kay says thanks, thank sue. you guys got thanks, my tax stuff scanned and i'm puttering in a sketchbook fantastic pages of val says see you next week see you next week val yeah take care Lori. yes Thanks so much for coming, and, Lori. And uh, yeah, what feel, a treat! For those of you who are not uh, usual collagers, feel free to join us for Collage Jam next week, same time. Just um, search for Cal K A L Honey on YouTube. Yeah. Look for the live stream, just like you do with Kim's. Same time though. Well, and and you, when I get the descriptions underneath the videos, I a link to cal's channel oh well bless you thank youtube you youtube channel on in there too so shannon says thank you both and stay well enjoy your first vaccine <laughs> rebecca says <laughs> thank you for this nice to see you see you in class cal yes yeah. i'll see you Th thanks rebecca i'll see you on uh thursday lovely excellent Yay. what are you teaching thursday what am i teaching thursday still life still life yeah oh well, you know, that's life, not going to be that's not going to be ordinary still life. no not stodgy it's going to be life. fun yeah Fun, artistic uh, thanks, still Nancy. Life. Nancy says, thank you both. Thank you, thank Nancy. Thank you for joining us. It's nice to have you along. Nancy. Hey, you were able to hang around for a long time. That's yeah, really that's nice. Yay. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And um, I hope to see you at Virtual Collage Jam. And I'll be manning the chat so or personing the chat. There's... You know, this got a, this is a better word, but I can't come up with it. <laughs> trying to come up with gender neutral terms. Uh, anyway, I'll be at the chat. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, You'll have be a well managing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> have a great week and uh, stay safe and uh, do things that are that are good for your soul because yeah. we we all need extra doses of that these days. Bye for now. Are you typing something in? I'm done.